Hi, welcome to I Love a Good Story. Today's interview is with Dan Bronson. Dan uh, is an author. He's an author of Confessions of a Hollywood Nobody. This, uh, I want to ask you a question. Have you always been a writer? I've always wanted to be a writer, but I've, I've, I'm in awe of writers. I, I went to Princeton because Scott Fitzgerald had gone there. Uh, the, uh, the biographer of Hemingway was there, the biographer of Frost. I went there for them, for that experience. Uh, but I, I never felt that I had what it takes, and that's why I ended up a teacher. I, I ended up writing out of desperation. Uh, now, and you taught writing. Yes, yes, I taught writing. And, and, and you wrote on a boat. Well, after I became boat. a screenwriter, yes, yes. Okay, so so tell me, what I want to know is, how old were you when you first became a screenwriter? I was, let's see, 40 years old, which is beating the odds because most screenwriters' careers are over at the age of 35. Unless someone has broken through in a big way or is a showrunner in television, it's over. They're not interested right. because the market is a youth market. It always has been, never more so than now. Now that the corporations have taken over the studio, their target audience is the 15-year-old kid, and they think that, you know, ideally they'd like to hire 15-year-old writers, but they haven't gotten to that yet. And so most people at 40 decide, okay, it's not going to happen, it's not going to go, I'm going to do something else. But you didn't do that. No, that, that was my something else. I, I was a college else. professor before that, mm -hmm. a tenured college professor. Mm -hmm. And I, I came out here uh, as a studio intern over at, at Universal and was offered a job in the, in the story department. Uh, I accepted. I resigned my tenured professorship only to find there was something called the Story Analyst Guild that wouldn't let me accept the job I'd been offered. And so I'd gone from total security to living on $10 a week, peanut butter and bananas, and house sitting for four or five months before I, I finally managed to break into Okay, the question. Did you, did you have a relationship at that time? Were you with somebody? Did you have a marriage? Did you have a girlfriend? Yes, past tense. Uh. <laughs> so I was just curious as to how somebody would handle that with someone else in their life. No, that, that was one of the casualties of the move, okay. my first marriage. Okay, so, uh, okay, so you kept going and uh, and I want to know how you got to, I, I know you used to go and ride on a boat, like in, you know, quiet, nobody, nobody bothered you, you used to just ride on that boat. So how, jump from, you, you kept going, you didn't, you were, you had nothing between a rock and a hard place, you were out of, you well, were, Well, no, I, you know, I had two mortgages. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, okay, t what happened? Well, I, I talked my way into the Universal Story Department. Uh, I became the senior story analyst there. The uh, story editor pulled me into his office after about six months and told me that he was going to be promoted and that I was going to be a successor. And then the actors struck. Oh and my gosh. <laughs> they shut down. The, everything was fine. Lou Wasserman paid no attention. It was like swatting at gnats. And then they made the mistake of uh, picketing the tour, which actually brought in more money than any of the movies made by Universal. And that's when he shut the studio down. And suddenly, instead of being the next executive story editor of Universal, I was out of work. Oh my, oh. <laughs> did you get on the boat then? No. No, 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 the boat came much later. Okay, forget the boat. I, I, right now, we're on a roller coaster ride right here. Well, that, I, That's what this book is, a the roller coaster book is ride. is that story. It's the story of my roller coaster ride. How? How, tell me something, this is a big book, Dan. How, from soup to nuts, how long did this take from conception to book sign? Uh, the, the writing of the book took about a year and a half. Uh, the rest of it took longer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, um, I would like to talk to you for another hour and a half, to tell you the truth. Um, we don't have a, a lot of time, but I, I wanted to say, can you tell, is there anything that you can say to the people listening that are 40-year-old writers? There probably aren't a lot of 40-year-old writers, but what, what I could say to anyone who's interested in a career in Hollywood, whether it's as a writer, or an actor, director, uh, craft services guy who serves the coffee, I mean, you've got to be convinced that this is what you were born to do. That 
There is nothing else out there for you so that you can endure any humiliation, any frustration, any, any failure that comes your way until, at last, you get lucky. Uh, if you don't feel that way, don't even think about it. I once wrote a story, a screenplay about uh, an acting teacher. So I hung out with a lot of the top acting teachers in Hollywood, and one of them said to me, you know, Dan, no matter what happens, I'll always have a job. You know why? Because every month, 6,000 young people come to Los Angeles hoping to be stars. And it's the same thing with writers. It's the same thing with directors. It, the odds, are, the, the deck is stacked against you. You have to believe this is it. It's destiny. And even then, it may not happen. Confessions of a Hollywood nobody written by a Hollywood somebody. Dan Bronson, thanks. This is I Love a Good Story. Signing off.